Alisa Bernal and Jean Luc Ayun. Questions and Answers February 12, 2021 Alisa starts in Spanish to welcome everyone on her weekly platform. Alisa, hello everyone, we're here like every Friday. And on this day, I have a guest, Dr. Jean Luc Ayun, who will come with me to answer your concerns and questions. So, we're going to spend a little hour together, Jean Luc and I, and all the spectators who are here. So please do not hesitate to ask us your concerns and we will pass them on to Jean Luc. Okay. So, let's bring him in, Jean Luc, with the group online. Alisa, hello Jean Luc. Hello Elisa and hello to all the listeners. Welcome to the group. So, I came to share a moment with you and all the people here. You have seen that with Elisa, we have planned other meetings, whether it is these Friday meetings that belong to Elisa but also, in a form of international collaboration, we will say, that we will reproduce, not on a regular basis but from time to time, depending on how we feel about each other. Always in this form of exchanges, well it is classically called sats on, but also channeling, moments of a gate meeting, if I can say so too. Here we are, independently of these meetings, tonight is a moment where we embrace each other and we try to answer each other, with each other, on what we are living, on our questions and sometimes your worries as Elisa said and also our joys. There, I believe that Elisa, that you have already received questions you had told me. Elisa, I have some questions for you. I was asked if I could answer on. There are frequencies that are coming. I guess I'm arriving by the, what's happening now? Elisa, frequencies. Oh yes, yes, frequencies, right. Elisa. And she talks about how the Schumann resonance is currently at 600 Hz and how it's affecting us, and what consequences it can have and how to protect ourselves from it. What can we do about it? That's it. There's one thing to accept, and that is that there's nothing we can do about it. So of course, when there are high frequencies at Schumann's level, although I doubt very much that it goes up to 600 for the moment, but it doesn't matter, there are indeed a lot of fluctuations, intensification of various frequencies and radiations that come from the sky, from the earth, but also from humans. Of course, whether we are talking about millimeter waves or radio waves, Schumann resonance or gamma radiation that comes both from the ground but also from the cosmos, so there is nothing to protect. It's always the same principle. You can't avoid what is there. The only way, once again, is the acceptance and embracing of what is there, which will make you understand that there is absolutely nothing to protect or avoid. All of the modifications observed on Earth today, wherever we look, are only a preparation lived by each one in a very different way to arrive at what has been named the event, which is not only the arrival of Nibir visible in our sky, whose influence is, above all, for the moment electromagnetic, but all this must not occult, must not hide the event which will be more or less synchronous with the appearance of Nibir and which is the emission of a galactic flash of the famous black hole which is named Sagatris A. So, all this will be more or less synchronous. So, it's inevitable. But I remind you that, no matter how frightened or misunderstood or even understood all these events, will not change anything in your way of living it. This is why we talk more and more about the present instant, the silence, the embracing, because it happens only in this present instant which knows neither time nor space. But no matter how you live the current events of the earth, for each one of us at all levels, will simply make sure that you will find yourself according to two possibilities. The acceptance of what is already there at all levels, which immediately leads to bliss and, on the other hand, a situation of denial of events or non-acceptance of events, or even justified anger or fear for the character, will then make the same events either be lived in bliss or experience as a nightmare. But the finality, since there has never been a beginning or an end, is the emergence into the grand silence, the real, you are never born, you never die. All this is cinema and you can see it and live it by letting be what is without asking yourself questions. Keep the questions to know, how you are going to pay your taxes, how you are going to take care of your body. 
But if you keep this attitude of embracing what is no matter how hard it is, you will find yourself in this bliss. There are so many of us living it now, Alisa. I didn't listen to you. There are so many of us living it now that it is unstoppable. There is only one truth, you are never born. You are the designer, the director, the actor. All the sets, all the stories, here or elsewhere, everything that has happened will happen or has been imagined, created. But you are none of those things. This is the strip truth and everyone can live it. You don't have to be called Marana Moy or Biddy or Jean Luc Aeon or whoever else claims to be this or that. Just be lucid with yourselves and quiet, and bliss will fall upon you or emerge spontaneously. Of course, the current period can be very questioning on all levels. And I would also answer in a general way that, when you get tired of asking yourself questions or when you no longer understand anything about what is happening in human society, that it will seem to you that there will never again be any solution, any way out, that is when you are closest to batitude because you have no other solution. Then we can talk about another question. Alisa. There I see a question, could it give a possibility, maybe I can put it there. Alisa tries to read a question, first in Spanish. She asks, in fact, if the chaos continues in such a way that we can't bear it because it's very tiring, wouldn't there be a protocol of crystals to put us to sleep in eternity? She goes, ha, ha, ha. She says, because it's exhausting. Laughing, no, there are crystals that allow, we had done with Elisa, two years ago, training on crystals that you're continuing, where we actually gave protocols, so to speak, that allow to meditate, but not meditate with visions, meditate on the present instant, meditate on this zero timer and this absolute, without any will, simply by the vibratory act of the crystals. Yes, it is possible. Why is it not possible? Then, of course, there are so many of them that I could not give you the recipe now. You have a book called Crystals and Bean and you have the trainings that Elisa continues now. But you know, everything is available on the internet in the glossary if I can say about this book called Crystals and Bean. Crystals and Bean Book Crystals Protocols, June 26, 2011, author, Jean Luke A. Young available for download on the site, Less Transformations, Elisa. Well, another question. Ah, I find myself all alone. Elisa has disappeared. So, we'll wait until she comes back. I'll stay on the line by myself. I need to see if Lisa is sending me a message on WhatsApp. Oh no, she's coming back. Elisa, I had to press, she came back. You pressed the wrong button, you! Laughs, Elisa. As usual, as usual. I do that, well, then as usual. When we said to give up everything, what are we referring to? To internal or also external resistance? Both external and internal, but above all, to the idea of being a body, to the idea of being a person, to the idea of being a story, to the idea of being a consciousness, to the idea of being something other than what is in the present instant. Alisa. To be a consciousness, you have to give up the idea to believe oneself a person, a story. Accept the idea that you have nothing to look for. It is the liar that finds you. It is not you that finds you. And I remind you that, no pun intended, reality is without you. You must not kill the body. Do not kill the emotions. You must not kill life. On the contrary, it is an immediate transcendence of a supposedly human condition that takes you immediately to nothingness. It also corresponds to the little voice of theory Lissix. Understand that this is not asceticism or will to anything. And indeed, as stated in the question, it is rather a surrender. You will lose nothing. It is the person who keeps telling you the opposite. In all the words I use, there is no metaphor. It's real, it's concrete. At that moment, what's going to happen? For me, as for millions of others. Your humanity is there, you're not anywhere else but there. The problems haven't gone away, at least not right away, and yet everything is profoundly different. 
So, I pass over the perceptions that may exist in many at the vibratory level, but it is both a state of total and unshakable certainty, and in the state that I call natural, there is at the same time a gape, this unspeakable love for all that is and is not. The person, she is always there, she lives what she has to live. And the great silence is always there, whatever the words, you feel it, you live it. It is clearly felt. You see everything else, really. You see everything else here as elsewhere for what it really is, a total illusion, a planetary and cosmic lie that was simply intended to make us play, to make us believe that we're a character, that we have karma, that we had to increase our consciousness, our vibrations, but above all, to remember who we are at the end of this dream that never began and never ended. And that's how I see the world and how I live it. I am in the same state, in the same availability, no matter what I do as a person. I remain in that kind of inner mobility that requires no effort or willingness that is called nudity, being naked. But also, this state of simplicity where you can see that your life unfolds peacefully. There are things to resolve for everyone in spite of everything. But you no longer experience this as something that can reach you somewhere even if your body is dying. You are out of the world and it is this clear perception that we have, while being perfectly present in the stream. That's a gape. That is the natural state. That is simplicity and that is the one truth. There is no other. Everything else, as Biddy said, is both a dream and a swindle. Alisa, there are several questions that always arise, that come up several times. We are referring to Nibir. I know that Zachariah Sitchin manipulated the translation of the Sumerian tablets. So, in the literal translations, it seems, there's no such planet. Alisa, there's another one who asked, a little further down, in fact, about the consequences of Nibir, the consequences that there can be on us if Nibir happens. There, those were two questions about Nibir. A question that says, so it's not true, there's no Nibir, that he had manipulated some Marian tablets, Sitchin. And another that asks, if Nibir comes, what will happen? I don't need the Sumerian writings or to project anything to live Nibir in my heart. It is an inner reality before it is a heavenly reality. Now, for those who still doubt the existence of Nibir, Elisa, I guess there are a lot of them. I simply invite you to look at the changes in our solar system over the last 30 years. Look at what is happening on the other planets, which are also warming up, the acceleration of the rotation of the Earth's core for already more than 20 years, the real climatic disturbances. Look on the internet at the so-called wobble of the Earth, the oscillation of the Earth. And then, what does it matter anyway from the moment the gay pandemic started more than two years ago, three years ago now? You have a real gay pandemic, which is of the order of the sacred, and you have the pandemic of the simulacrum, of the much talked about virus. But the finality is always the same, never or not never. I could talk to you and show you that process of global extinction of humanity that is taking place, but I would tell you today, it is useless. Look honestly at who you're inside and you'll discover and live the truth. Absolutely everything else today is just resistance, veils, that you feed with your questions. There's urgency to be in the present instant. There's urgency to live the real. And really, for those who are still subjected to the spectacle of this world, or to the spiritual spectacle of any evolution of consciousness, to look through all that and to look at the essential which is inside you. Because there is no story there. There is not even one consciousness. There isn't even a self, it's what you could call the self without self with a pure Brahman, it's the only place where you're complete. That's when you realize what was called the oath and promise at the time. And today, in a much simpler way, to emerge from that dream or nightmare. I am here and now no matter what happens and I am the batitude, nothing else. Your humanity continues, but you will never again be fooled by any history, any world, or even any superconsciousness. That is truth, that is freedom, that is the natural state, that is really the for everyone. Alisa. So, some people ask, but how do you go inside yourself? I don't know how to do it. You are already there, there's no technique. 
It is not a question of vibratory ascent, even if for many people we have gone through this vibratory initiation, the opening of doors, of kakras, the activation of new bodies and all the siddhas, the powers of the soul, but today is another day. You don't need anything. You need yourself, right now, to embrace what is, at all levels, whatever happens. You prove your availability in the present instant, and this is where the intelligence of the light, the Holy Spirit if you will, the Shakti awakens you. And it is there that you see that all this is only a dream. The hardest thing is certainly to accept that you have nothing to seek, you have nothing to conquer, you have absolutely no need of will, but I would say what kind of faith or absolute trust in what is unknown to you, but which will reveal itself in the very moment you accept. This is what I have called the good news or the information of time zero. It happens here and now in this body, in this world, in this dream, and nowhere else. I've been somewhere else, I've talked about it last time, everywhere, in all dimensions. Alisa, I lost you because you were saying, I was saying, going somewhere else is useless. I had the opportunity to speak, to demonstrate myself, countless brothers and sisters, the possibilities of moving in this world or in all dimensions. Today if I am telling you, it is useless. Of course, all this exists, in the sense of existing, but truth is outside time, outside space and outside dimensions. And it is when you live this moment, in a brutal or progressive way, that you see peace, silence, bad attitude and joy. Everything else has no consistency. Perhaps we'll take some other questions. Alisa. Yes, there are many questions. Did the great of adders eat fish or meat? Is there a relationship between food and waking up? That's a little bit of a mental question. He says that if food, eating meat or fish, if the great of adders ate meat or fish, does that affect waking up? Absolutely. Food, during the celestial weddings and afterwards, Anael had talked a lot about food. Certain types of food actually promote the vibratory rise. But you still have beings who woke up by eating one host a week, Mar Robin, a great French mystic. Anyway, food is important to be in good health. Above all, it's still better to have a well-maintained vehicle, isn't it? But the awakening has nothing to do with it. It's going to be a lot more brutal what I'm going to say. As long as you think you depend on any circumstance, it's simple, you'll never be free. First you have to accept that you're already this perfection. All ways of improvement, Alisa. But the perfection, not in the character, the perfection in the being, in what we are. Yes, we're in the truth, in the real, there's not even perception, there's not even projection of light, we're not even the source of light, we're the totality of the dream and the totality of the real. Everything else is only a deviation, and all knowledge is only ignorance of that truth. Truth is without words, without dimension, without body, without anything but with everything. One cannot say anything about it, one can only live it. Alisa, a sister says, why do the puppets want to eliminate us when we know that we will be eliminated anyway? So, repeat, why the end is what? Alisa. Why do the puppets want to eliminate us when we know we will be eliminated anyway? But it's very simple, they have the same purpose. Just think that people are afraid of the disease, afraid of the virus and they run to get vaccinated. In fact, they run to be genocided quite simply, because in the conceptions of the Illuminatus, the puppets, as Steiner had perfectly described it, this gene therapy, this genocide, aims to lock up the soul in the infrahuman planes, which we call transhumanism today, which is only a 2.0 eugenics, which was intended to take the soul and the consciousness into the computer circuits, nothing more, nothing less. The soul no longer exists, the collective astral was dissolved long ago. What remains are simply snippets, automatic memories, egregores. In the end, whether you're carried away by Nibir, by the white paradise, by the virus that does not exist or by the vaccine that is not a vaccine, right behind that there's the truth, there's a gape. It makes no difference. It was explained at length by Flame, by Bitty, by Abda, by myself. 
the first dream and the last dream, what Bernard of Montreal and others called the sixth root race, is ultimately the first root race. The Alpha joins the Omega. End of the myth as I say creation, which never began, which can never be destroyed. What is destroyed is the adherence to it. So, by Prince Humanism or by a gape, or by the galactic flash, it is simply the scenario that everyone has written. Some chose to write a fairy tale script, and others wrote a horror movie script. But the word end is the same for the fairy tale as it is for the horror movie. There's no image in what I say, no metaphor, it's a strip truth. There's absolutely no point in believing me, you can't believe it and you shouldn't believe it, but you have everything you need to live it. That's it. I'll let you ask the question. Alisa, there's a question from a sister who says, if we are only a character, how can we be caught? Alisa, but we are not a character. No, we're anything but a character. We're neither this body, nor any form, nor any story, nor any dimension. And yet, without any paradox, we're just as much all that. This is the reality to live, you cannot understand it. I repeat that the hardest thing is to accept that you have nothing to do with and for the truth. As long as you keep this posture in your consciousness, in your mind, in your beliefs, it is you who maintain the veils on what you have always been. Alisa. Then the sister asks further to this question. What if in our film we wrote that we will not be caught, but I don't know what she means by caught. I'm sorry, it doesn't mean anything. Caught how? Alisa gives an explanation in Spanish. Alisa. I was just telling her that there's something she didn't understand with all this. Alisa. And a brother, he asks. How can one be, in this chaos, be beyond the mind, and how can one have all the necessities of this body to be at peace, and maintain it? It seems impossible to me. It happens by itself when you live the real, none of that is true. At our last binder, we were saying, we were talking about throwing out this character, this story. As long as you don't vomit it all up, as long as you don't go through all the current absurdities we're living through, you won't be free. Realize that by asking these kinds of questions, there's indeed an unbearable side for this brother or sister, because he hasn't yet understood that there's no solution. So, we may all know, or more or less accept that there'll never be any turning back, but you must also accept that there's no becoming, that there's no possibility of escaping the awakening. Whatever you do, you will not change anything, and it is in understanding and living this that you're free. This question shows non-acceptance, trying to demonstrate the discomfort that is experienced. I have said and said again like OMA, like Betty, like Bernard from Montreal, the chaos of this world, the chaos of society, the chaos of the personal at times, he's just an agent of your awakening. Stop internally opposing, fighting or anything else, and you will be free. This will not prevent you from using your mind to solve what needs to be solved, but you will soon find that grace, divine providence, fluidity will be at work in all areas of your life, body and thoughts. This is a reality. Ask around you, there are enough testimonies, on YouTube, on Facebook, of brothers and sisters who are living the same thing. Of course, they don't know all these words, even a cacras, vibrations, a gape, fire of the heart or double terrace of the heart. But there is the same unity, the same tranquility, the same simplicity, the same joy, the same naturals. You are available for whatever is, whatever is intolerable at the mental level or at any level. Alisa. So, the same brother who made the previous question, says. Then there is no karma, it is an illusion, it is the total swindle of spirituality and religions, but also of the whole history. Karma concerns the person, the soul, but it does not concern freedom of the real. To believe in karma is to believe in action slash reaction. It's true that today on this earth, we don't have the impression that karma works very well, doesn't it? I have worked a lot on reincarnation, on regressions. It allows you to treat people, yes. The problem is that today if I see clear, there's no one. It's all a dream and if I want to tell you something at the end of this hour, it's... Wake up! Stop dreaming. 
be there, present, available, for the present instant, for what is there in this moment that you're living. Embrace, embrace everything, joy's right behind. But if you don't try, you won't be able to know. It may seem to you that everything I have said is a dream, a total illusion, but from where I am telling you this, that is, from my character, here, present, I am not anywhere else but here and now. Just remember for those who have the opportunity to read this, even if it was doctored, when I will have the faith to move mountains, when I will have the knowledge, when I will speak the language of the angels. And it ends with, if I lack love, I am nothing. You are love, you are nothing else, everything else will pass, you, you will not pass. And I don't say this to the character who thinks he can hear, but to the silent observer who listens to what I say and hears. It's very simple, and the more chaos there is, the simpler it's going to be. This has been announced already for many years by Omrem Michael Ivan Hadov, and I assure you that this is the strict truth. One cannot lie about joy, one cannot lie when one understands and lives at all that one has always sought was not elsewhere than in the here and now. This is what I had to say. Of course, we will continue a little bit in this momentum on Friday, February 26 since we will have more Anna and Moiti. It's an anniversary, because the last time she came was last year on Lake Tinecaca in Peru, when the elements were raging above us, Ma was already talking to us about what we are living today. Alisa. It's been two years, or one year. Yes, last year, no, no, one year. It was just before the confinement. So, we will have more Anne and Moy, and we will continue to exchange on this indispensable and indissoluble truth that we are, that is to say that we will put, because it is always a great pleasure, well for us I think, for Lisa, for me, to enlighten all this jumble of things that are obstacles to what we are. There, therefore, we will continue in the progression of the state that we are living, of what is. Alisa. So, thank you for being here today. Thank you. Alisa. And so, we will see you on the 26th to receive my Anna de Moy. Thank you very much. Good evening Jean Luc. Thank you all, thank you to Lisa for welcoming me. Goodbye, Alisa. Alisa. Goodbye. Alisa continues in Spanish, thanks and gives some more explanations. Through Jean Luc A. Yun. Transcription from French. Transcriptions. Father, Publica Facebook. English translation. LMF.